Okay, we finna go rabbit hunting. And we gotta take the air Ventura shotgun and see if we can blast something. This is the area we got the hut in. All down there is probably a, this property is probably a, maybe a quarter, quarter of a mile that way, maybe uh, 400 yards that way. See what we can get. We're out here today and uh, we're gonna go see if uh, he can get a rabbit with this dog on an air gun. I'm gonna try to film it. Let's go, we'll go see what we can do with it. Flip it around now. It ain't gonna take long to start shooting. <laughs> well, we'll see. I know. I think I told you the other, the other day. Okay. He's there with the gun. This is what we're gonna try to jump one out of. I'm gonna try to chase him back that way. Oh boy, they're rat they're rabbit tracks. Whoa, they're rabbit tracks. Okay, come on up to right there. In case one comes out of here. I don't see nothing in there. I know, but you're right, we're gonna jump one eventually. Oh yeah, we're gonna jump one. It's too nice a day for them out to be sitting up. We'll be sitting tight though. Look at that now. They might be in the pine trees down there. Could be. So it's good to have a dog, but a dog a dog. I gotta figure out how to put this on my gun. So I can carry my gun like this and still be filming. So I'm learning something today. You jump anywhere out here and find that's that way. That's why. I, oh yeah, these are fresh tracks out here. That's why I always. Uh, yeah, that's why I always would like to have me a little, a little uh, dog. Damn, that's two. Well, keep going. Damn, you're gonna see two. I saw you raise that gun up at the city saw something. Well, that's where they're going to be at. Yeah. He had told him I could come 
Come on in and cut some of this shit back, but I wasn't I wanna do all that. I mean I mean just more little trails through. You should be looking at that what's called in a second. The deer uh the deer block. If it's still standing. Oh, look at all these rabbit tracks. Another big ass hole over there. Man, these rabbits got holes every fucking way. Uh, is that the blind? That's the blind. That's where he told me I could come shoot my deer from. With my crossbow. It's gotta be in pretty it was in pretty bad condition when I was here before. So it's gotta be in pretty bad condition now. I'm gonna go take a look at it. Oh ain't number rabbit track. Here's a trail right here, going right into the pine. See, here's a trail right here, going right into the pine. Damn it! I jumped right there by the fucking tree. There you go, Uncle. Oh man, you wasn't ready? No. You didn't go far. You didn't go far. You go far. Damn. I knew I was going to jump right over there. I knew. Yeah, you gotta have to, you gotta be able to get that gun up and, and, and fire in a second, boy. These mugs, they out of here. I just wanted to see one. That's what they do. They, they won't wait till you get to them, they get up early. If they sit tight, you're good. But they hear you coming and they, and they start hopping away. Here's the trail oh, right here. Real, real, real quick. Huh? Here Here's the trail. This is the trail he probably was on. Leading right down there. I ain't gonna get angry. Go. He was a big one too. I was on fire, but you know, firing by the road ain't good though. You fire this way, fire back this way, but you don't fire. I ain't gonna fire on the road. Yeah. Now I fired down this lane. I think that's. I think if we had a dog, the depths would they would be able to bring him out. Dog would bring him back. Yeah, but they bring him out of them pines. So I think them might be held up in them pines. Well, at least we saw one. Maybe some. Maybe we can see a nothing. Okay. That ain't yeah. it, no. I let you go ahead of me. Go somebody. this way, or you gonna go that 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 that, that way? Well, we, uh, 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 we're gonna go down and come back. Go down and come back. So if you want to go down, if you want to go cut through there, we cut through there. I'm gonna walk you down to the end of the line so you see where the property ended at. Oh, come on. So just work your way that way any way you want to do it. Shit. One thing about that rabbit boy, when that mug, you gotta be able to get that mug up and on him ass in a split second. That's one thing I never could do. That's all I need. But it was pointing straight toward the road. Yeah. You follow these, follow these little trails like this here, yeah. and then you, if you see a clump by that trail, that's where you're gonna find his ass. Well, today we decided to take out the Air Ventura uh, shotgun and see what we could get. And uh, we were able to get one rabbit here, and that's all we needed because we're gonna make this a cooking video, a hunting and uh, cooking video. So uh, unfortunately, we had five shots. On all five of the shots, I did not, I did not have the GoPro on because you never know with rabbits when they're going to jump. But they just happen to jump every time I had it off. So five shots, nothing recorded in terms of the shots. But um, So it's not a review of the gun or anything. It's just us out hunting with it to see how it does. So let's go home and cook this fellow up and make this a cooking uh, video. How to cook rabbit. Catch, clean, and cook. Let's go. Okay, uh, we've cleaned our rabbit, and now, now we're gonna quarter it and marinate it. So let me, I'll do the quartering off and camera, and come back and show you how it looks. Okay, we've quartered the rabbit, and uh, 
Now all we gotta do is marinate it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna marinate it in some some vinegar, some vinaigrette dressing. Uh, we'll have some crushed rosemary added to it. Um, some uh, extra virgin uh, olive oil and some salt and pepper. And we're just gonna marinate this thing. I'm probably gonna marinate it for a few days. When I come back, I'll tell you how long I marinate it. But uh, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for quite a while because I want that vinegar to uh, break down some of the proteins in there and make it a little bit more tenderized. And I want that vinaigrette and that uh, that oil to soak into it too. So, And the salt and pepper is going to add a nice flavor. So we'll be back in a few days to uh, do the next part. Okay, I'm back just for a second to show you that what I do when I get ready to marinate, I put it all in a... Uh, freezer bag and uh, that way every few days I can come in and shake it and uh, squeeze it around and stuff and make sure that all of it's uh, being uh, infused with the uh, ingredients we have here so let me get in the bag and I'll come right back okay we, we're back and as you can see I have it in the bag here the nice thing about having it in the bag is you can knead it every now and then uh, and when you put it in the refrigerator you can put it into a small area if it's in a bowl or a Tupperware or something you gotta, it's gonna take up a lot in the refrigerator, but you can just take this and just stick it in any corner of the refrigerator and every day or so, you can just move it around and knead it as, as needed. And uh, it's gonna marinate now for quite a few days. Let that uh, get infused with all of that and let that vinegar break, break it down and make it a little bit more tender. So we'll be back in a few days as I said, and uh, we'll get to the second part of this. Okay. Well, okay, we've been, we're back and it's been two weeks. I actually let this sit in the, uh, in the refrigerator and kind of cold age uh, for two weeks. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can use a brine like I did in this mixture here, or you can just uh, dry age it. I have some people I know that dry age it, where you just set it in the refrigerator in an open container and just let it kind of like air dry, and that really breaks down and makes it be tenderized. But I like to go ahead and uh, put a brine on mine so that it can be soaking during that time. But it's been two weeks now, and what I did was, because I did put olive oil in here, this kind of congealed a little. And because it congealed a little, um, I had to put it in the microwave just to make it back into a liquid. Um, so that the, uh, especially the olive oil could uh, become liquid again. So let's uh, go ahead to the second phase of this, which bread this up for frying. So let's do that next. Okay, we're back and I have my paper bag here. Uh, we just love to use these paper bags for this type of thing. So whenever we go to the store, we ask, they say paper or plastic. We always get paper because we can use it for other things before and it's recyclable. So we're just going to reach into here and take out each piece and turn. And these things now, like I said, they've been breaking, they've been breaking down now for quite a little while. So this stuff should be nice and tenderized just from the process of being left in the refrigerator for this period of time. Okay, having done that, now we're just going to get our seasonings together. And I'll grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, for the next step in this process, you're going to need um, some hot sauce, a third of a cup of milk, two eggs, some seasoned salt, some black pepper, some garlic, and some salt. And then of course the flour in which you're gonna roll it in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna mix the milk and the egg together. So you're just gonna push, push this up. The eggs and the milk together. Okay, so I'm just gonna whisk this up off camera. I'll come back in a second. Okay, now that we've got this, this egg uh, and milk whisked up pretty good, we're going to add some hot sauce to this just until it turns pink. So, and the hot sauce is not going to make it hot. It's just going to give it a really, really good flavor. You can do this to whatever degree you think is, is, uh, is good, but I like to make it turn just a, a nice little pink color. And that's enough for me. And that's just about it. Put in one more dab. We'll call that it. 
Okay, we'll take that and set that to the side. And now we want to mix together these three ingredients because this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go a little light on the salt uh, because we've already uh, marinated it. So it should be seasoned pretty well. But this is just to give it that, uh, that coating that, for the frying. So we'll come right back. Okay, we're back and I've mixed those three ingredients together. Those four ingredients together, the salt, the pepper, the seasoned salt, and the garlic. We're just going to mix that together really, really well here. We're going to use this to, uh, to season the meat. All we want to do now is just take and bread and, and, and take this and just lightly sprinkle it over all sides of the, uh, of the game. And as you can see, I'm just doing that with my finger. Okay. And now all we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna we're gonna take the egg here and yes, I mean, now we gotta get our skillet out and get it hot. And we're gonna basically take the meat, dip it in here, dip it into the flour, uh, dip it back in here, dip it back in the flour a second time, and then we're gonna put it on the fryer. So let's take a break and we'll come back with that in a second. Now we're gonna get our oil going. We want to get up to about 300 degrees minimum. And some uh, in the last video, that when I did the uh, squirrel, someone asked me what I use for shortening. I just use uh, this whatever's around the house. I had peanut oil for a while. Peanut oil is kind of expensive, but boy, that's some really good stuff. It doesn't burn as easy. It takes a higher heat. But I'm going with this today, just to make sure that the grease is at the right temperature, I like to use a uh, a monitor just to let me know when it's getting up to the temperature it needs to be. I generally just take it and stick it on the side of the stove, on the side of it like this. And then I can just monitor it and see uh, what the temperature is and when I can start, so. Okay, the grease has reached that magic, about 325 right now. So now we're going to the second phase of it. And uh, which is, we want to take, uh, the, 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 listen, dip it in the egg mixture. Like that. I don't want to move that thing because it's hot. And then we're going to drop it into the flour. Mix it in the flour well. And then Drop it in. And we just go through each, each piece like that. And there we go. Just gonna let this thing Fry away now. Be right back. Okay, now we're gonna turn them. It cooks a little bit faster because the grease is the hottest when it goes in. You can monitor that yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this off. I think I'm gonna flip it more than one. The smaller pieces usually cook a little faster, so these here are ready to come out. They're not as thick, so the heat tends to go through them pretty fast. So we'll take the smaller ones out right now. Let these fatter ones just Gonna leave these legs here. This one should be ready. Yep. I was a little bit on the Cajun side, but that was the first one that went in. Okay, this layer here is ready to come out too. Not quite, as, not quite as cajun as that first one we dropped in there when the grease was the hottest. And I think these colors here are ready to come out also. And we'll let this, this back is quite thick as you can see. 
but it'll take a little bit longer. But I, I'll go with one of these, uh, one of these bottom parts of the lid. Just to see how it came out. A little bit of crust, a little bit of crust, crust with that too. Got to taste. Wow, that's good. Um, go ahead and take this one out. I think this is about ready. Hmm. Now what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make some gravy with this also. So give me a moment to straighten up for that, and I'm gonna make a little gravy. Well, I can report. I can report that this. Uh, this thing is tender and it is good. And the nice thing about it is because I let it go for two weeks and I allowed it, um, during that two weeks I allowed it to just marinate. The flavor is in every bite. It's not just on the crust like it does when when you just uh, just cook something and the crust tastes real good. The flavor is throughout the whole rabbit. Mm. And it is tender. A lot of people say that uh, rabbit and squirrel is tough, but if you do it right, it is tender. What we're going to do now, though, is I want part of this to be fried, but I also want to make some gravy for the rest. So we're just going to use the rest of our flour we have over here. And a little bit of our the seasoning we had left. And we're just going to make a gravy here. Add a little water to it. And Get it going. Okay, we're just letting that cook down now. I'm still <laughs> eating on the rabbit here. Mm. I will say this though. Whereas this, this rabbit is tender and really, really good. My choice between rabbit and squirrel is going to be squirrel every time. rabbit it has a nice flavor and everything and I really like it but man that squirrel is a different thing this is a story so for me in the future rabbits are kind of be are gonna be kind of safe rabbits are gonna be safe and squirrels are in trouble <laughs> because uh, squirrels just taste too good let me just say that um, when you get wild game do yourself a favor. Age it. Whether you put it in the refrigerator for two weeks, like I did, and um, get another bite of this. Whether you put it in the refrigerator for two weeks, like I did, or whether you dry age it, put it in the refrigerator and just let it kind of sit for two weeks. Let me say this. With wild game, the longer you can wait, the more tender it's going to be. The quicker you cook it, unless you're going to cook it like really, really slow, like put it in a slow cooker and do all those sort of things, um, it's going to be tough. And this, I'm telling you, this rabbit here is falling off the bone. I do not have to pull this. I bite it and it comes right off. I've seen some people uh, with squirrel and rabbit do a recipe and when they bite into it like this, it don't just come off like that. They gotta yank it. And that's when I know that meat is still tough. Anyway, I'm gonna close this thing out, let this cook down. But I guess I do should give a taste of that first. So let's get a piece of this this gravy, this gravy part. Whoa, that's hot. Put it over here. And we just get them. A little bite of that. Mm. Mm. I don't know what is this. Just something about gravy. The gravy one again is a meal. This is a snack. So if you just want to snack your rabbit, just go ahead and uh, follow your recipe, your favorite recipe, and. And eat it like chicken, 
or you can go ahead and put in some gravy that gives a total different consistency to it mm, and a better taste so with that I'm gonna close this video out probably won't be doing any cooking videos again I wanted to do a rabbit and a squirrel I've done two squirrels and one rabbit so got that old whiff so we're gonna call it a day I want to thank you guys for tuning in thank you for subscribing and ringing the bell and um, keep it safe I'll be back with another video hopefully in a week have a good one